Hello YouTube, I'm Marco, your local watch cardinal, and today I think I'm going to be doing what I believe to be an interesting video just juxtaposed to my first one, which is kind of the 50 best luxury watches in that sub $5,000 range that are really good alternatives given the fact that we can't get Rolex Steel Sports at retail. So of course, uh, to filter through these, I had a couple of criteria that I'll list off now, so I'll just be looking down at my notes. So in terms of case sizes, I had a range from 38 to 42 millimeters. Now, of course, for Panerai, I went a little bit bigger because some of their cases do tend to wear a bit smaller. Um, but 38 to 42 millimeter for me is kind of my sweet spot and the, the spot that I feel is really the best for uh, watches. Prices, obviously sub $5,000 for me. That's I'm Canadian, so that's just under $6,500 Canadian given the current exchange rate. Preferably steel cases. I like steel as opposed to anything else. It's more durable. It's more wear resistant. And I just feel that the fit and finish of steel is better than any other material on the market. I wanted reliable and accurate movements, things that were easy to service that you could beat up. Or as well, I'd like to mention that were great in-house movements that were sort of horologically significant in terms of their kind of makeup. Uh, and of course, no attention was paid to investment potential or value retention. I, I didn't really care for that given the fact that uh, I was just kind of giving you just as many alternatives as possible. Uh, so again, these aren't great investment grade watches, but they're great watches in terms of their movements, in terms of their case finishing, in terms of their dials. All watches, of course, were pulled from Chrono 24. It's just easier for me to filter through it. Uh, and of course, before we begin anything, customary wristwatch check. I'm actually wearing today my Hamilton Ventura. Not a watch that I thought I would ever buy. I'm actually approaching two years of ownership with this watch very shortly. And, um, you know, it has a lot of sentimental value. And it was a watch that I stopped wearing for a while after I bought my Pam. Obviously, I still feel that I'm in my honeymoon phase with my Pam. Um, but it's a watch that I'm starting to, to come back to. And I like it a lot. So uh, I don't know what to say. I'll get into a bit more detail on the venture once I actually do a state of the collection video. So let's jump right in. I'm going to give you what I believe are some of the best alternatives to Rolex out there on the market. So going brand by brand, for me, the first brand to mention is, of course, Omega. Now, on the gray market, that sub five run, sub $5,000 range is really dominated by Omega. Uh, for me, the Seamaster, the Aquaterra, the Speedmaster, either the Sapphire Sandwich, the Hesalite, or the first Omega in space, the Railmaster, or the Constellation, those are five really, really solid options from Omega in that sub $5,000 range that I feel will stand the test of time, that are durable, that are rugged, that can take a beating, that are not too difficult to service, not too expensive to service, and in terms of their horology, is actually really, really strong. So Omega, obviously, I don't need to rant and rave. As I said last time, probably the best bang for buck value on the gray market. Uh, and on the watch market today. So Omega, you definitely cannot go wrong if you choose really any Omega in that sub $5,000 range. The next brand is Tudor. Of course, Tudor has a number of great watches. Pretty much, I'd recommend anything across the Black Bay range. I prefer the Black Bay 58, the original version. I also like the Black Bay GMT with the Pepsi bezel. Uh, Prices have started to slowly but surely come down as a result of increased manufacturing. I also like the Prince chronograph. That was a great chronograph value movement. Um, and it's a great alternative, an affordable alternative to a Rolex Daytona. Uh, and it comes, of course, just beautifully made, a number of dial variations. Uh, and again, you have an easy to service movement that's a workhorse movement, and that's pretty, pretty decently accurate. I also like, in terms of chronograph, the Tudor Monte Carlo. I think those are pretty funky, pretty cool, and pretty unique in any person's collection. And last but not least, the Tudor Pelagos. Obviously, this is, to me, probably one of the best, if not the best, two watches in that sub $5,000 range on the market today. Talking about an in-house movement that's durable, wear-resistant, super accurate. And, of course, you get uh, wa tremendous water resistance. So, we're talking about an all-around, super rugged, tough, and durable watch. Secondly, I like to talk about uh, JLC. Of course, for me... There's really only two JLCs in this range that are worth mentioning because sub 5,000 for JLC is actually quite hard to find. Uh, I would say there's the reversal. Probably you're not going to get in the large size. You'll probably have to get in the medium size, which is good for me because I do have smaller wrists. 
and of course the master control collection unfortunately not the sector DAO ones but the kind of uh, standard uh, master control collection and that's a five thousand dollar range you can easily get one these are of course fantastic watches with in-house movements made by one of the most historic brands uh, really in all of watches right the watchmakers watchmaker as jlc is known as so you just can't go wrong with i think the reverso or the master control if you choose these watches in that sub five thousand dollar range next is breitling so there's a number of offerings in that sub five thousand dollar range from breitling that I actually really enjoy. The first being the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 42. I like in particular the blue dial. Those are fantastic watches. The Breitling Premier B01 Panda Chronograph is a great watch uh, with the B01 movement, which is absolutely fantastic. Made by the same movement manufacturer that actually made the new Rolex Daytona movement. Of course, there's a the Breitling Trans Ocean 38, which I really like as well. And the Breitling Navitimer 42. Obviously, Breitling is a brand that has gone a lot of criti criticism and has kind of been overlooked by watch collectors. So use it to your benefit, by the fact that they are overlooked nowadays. And there's a lot of value presented, I feel, uh, by Breitling, given their new in-house movements, given their new uh, really great, robust, uh, accurate movements that are also easy to service from Breitling and it won't cost you an arm and a leg to do it. So I think anything that I just mentioned from Breitling there represents great value, represents uh, amazing watches, and I feel that they're timeless and classic in their design, so I'd have no problem if you ever bought those. Next is IWC. Again, IWC is a brand that you can go on and on about. Uh, there's, for me, the Portofino Chronograph that I like a lot. You can, of course, take anything from their Portofino range. In that sub $5,000 range, they're pretty easy to find. Uh, the Mark 18 series is great as well. I personally prefer the Petit Prince edition with a blue dial. Uh, of course, there's the Portuguese chronograph. My favorite is the white dial with the blue hour indices and the blue hands. Those are a bit harder to find in the sub 5000 range. You'll probably have to get one with no box or papers. Um, but as a result of the fact that they just came out with the newer version, those prices have started to fall again. And IWC isn't a brand that sells super, super quickly. So you can actually negotiate and bargain down those Portuguese chronographs pretty low, I'm sure, if you try it. And last but not least is the IWC Engineer. I like in particular the newer ones with the silver dial. I think that's a great everyday kind of tool watch and a great kind of dress watch at the same time. It's a little contradictory, a tool watch and a dress watch, but I think they're still really nice. They're really well made. Uh, the movements are easy to service. They're easy uh, to kind of beat up. And of course, they're very, very accurate over time. So. IWC is another great brand in that sub $5,000 range. Next is Panerai. Of course, I would have to mention my PAM 183 that I personally own. Now, that's a great watch. I could pick that up for $3,000. US uh, They sell all day for the sub $5,000 range. ETA movement, which is super easy to service. It's a workhorse movement. Uh, and of course, it's very, you know, pretty decently accurate over time. Of course, there's the PAM 392, the PAM 574, which actually has their new in-house movement. I found one version with no box or papers, which again, it's going to be a bit harder to find some of these more modern in-house Panerais in that sub $5,000 range, um, but you can find them no box or papers. You'll just have to be patient and look a little bit. Uh, the next is the PAM 48 and of course the PAM 111 or the 112. Now, some of these are bigger than 42 to uh, bigger than 42 millimeters, uh, which is fine for me because PAM is meant to wear a little bit bigger. Uh, my PAM is a 45 millimeters, so that's the PAM 183. But because the kind of lugs are wire lugs, so they're non-existent, it really wears like a 45 millimeter lug to lug wash. So it actually fits my wrist quite well, I feel. Next brand is Grand Seiko. I'm kind of up in the air on Grand Seiko. I might make a video actually about Grand Seiko and why I feel they're kind of having a negative trajectory. Uh, over the long term. I feel there's just too many limited editions that they're coming out with and they're kind of falling prey to the same thing the, the same thing that Omega is doing, right? Too many limited edition, too many watches being made. Uh, and again, these are great, fantastic movements. These are greatly finished movements. Uh, they're amazing watches, but you know, I, I just think they're, they're mucking around too much and their, their association with Seiko is one that I feel need, can be overlooked. I think it, it it kind of detracts from their brand. The fact that they're a luxury brand 
but they associate themselves with kind of this affordable watch brand called Seiko, which for many of us collectors is kind of the entry level, something we want to avoid if we're looking for a luxury watch. So in terms of Grand Seiko, I'd recommend really only two, the SBGM221, which is that really nice GMT with the ivory dial, and the SBGR261, which is a great everyday kind of dress watch, uh, casual watch type of feel with again, that ivory dial. So those are the two from Grand Seiko that I personally would recommend. Next is Zenith. Obviously Zenith in that sub $5,000 range on the gray market is fantastic bang per buck value. Um, so anything in terms of their elite line, I like personally the elite blue or the elite chronograph. Either one is just great, great value. The Defy Classic with a blue dial is also a really great watch. And any of really the El Primeros you can get your hands on, be it the Chronomaster, the Power Reserve, uh, the, the annual calendar versions, they're all great watches. They represent great value on the gray market. And of course, they are using the historic El Primero movement that was once famously used in the uh, Rolex Daytona. So Zenith for me is a brand that presents tremendous value on the gray market and is one that collectors should definitely pay attention to if they're looking for a real kind of hot horology watch in that sub $5,000 range. Next. Um, so Guashuta, obviously Guashuta is made out of Germany, tremendous watch brand represents tremendous value on the secondary market. In that sub $5,000 range, it's pretty hard to find uh, watches from Glashuta, but you can find the Senator, uh, some Senator models, and of course, uh, some models from the 60s collection. Again, very hard to find. You're gonna have to do some research and dig a little bit and be patient, but you can find these watches in that sub $5,000 range. These are great movements, uh, in-house movements that are finished by hand, and of course, that are supremely accurate. And Glashuta actually doesn't charge an arm and a leg to get these watches serviced. Their, their service prices are actually pretty reasonable, especially for their entry level watches. Next is a brand that is hated by most in the watch industry, which is Gerard Perigo. And in particular, I'm talking about the Laureato Big Date Moonface. This is a watch that another YouTuber called Federico Talks Watches owns. And it's actually a great watch in terms of the actual watchmaking inside of it. They use an in-house movement uh, it's 100 meter water resistant. Obviously, it takes kind of design cues from the Royal Oak uh, in terms of its bezel and its bracelet is kind of reminiscent of the Nautilus. So it's a little bit shady, but I think it is still a, a very good looking watch. It's still a very good watch. The one thing I would say is they do use the Caliber 3300, uh, which is kind of a movement that is a bit more delicate. So although it's a sports watch, it does use kind of a more delicate movement. And that movement is actually very hard to service. Uh, for your local watchmaker. You'll probably have to bring that into Gerard Perigo to service in-house. So just something to bear in mind if you are looking at that, but it is a fantastic watch. I'm kind of uh, torn to, to show you guys that watch because I was looking at it and pretty interested in it myself. All right, next is the Cartier Drive de Moon. I think it's actually probably the only watch from Cartier I would ever buy. I like the design. It has a fantastic in-house movement. That movement is actually also used in the Vacheron Constantin 56, the steel kind of uh, everyday watches of Vacheron that Richemont made them make, kind of the entry level into Vacheron. So Cartier Drive, I think, is a really great, great value on the, the secondary market. Uh, you can definitely find those all day for that sub, that sub $5,000 uh, price range, all day, all day. Next is the Bulgari Octo. Again, a bit harder to find in that sub 5,000, but if you look hard enough, you definitely can find them. Uh, it didn't take me that long to find or that much time to find uh, at all. So it's a great watch, you know, in-house movement. It's uh, finished quite well. Uh, Bulgari obviously uh, isn't the greatest brand in terms of their watchmaking. They're known more, more for their jewelry, but they do make good watches. Obviously the Octo is a Genta watch, so you're getting kind of that Genta history and Genta design from it. So overall, I definitely would recommend these watches. Now to go more so into the independent space, um, I could definitely say that these are a little bit harder to find in terms of finding them just a bit readily available on Chrono24. Um, they don't always come up because they're a little bit rare, um, so just bear that in mind. Uh, the first brand would be D. Dorn Bluth & Son, which has gained a lot of traction because they were featured on Watchfinder. Obviously, they have their rose gold plated movements. They're finished really nicely, and overall, they're fantastic watches. 
They use a modified ETA movement, so it's a workhorse movement. Not that easy to service because it's modified, so you probably have to go in-house. Uh, but overall, just a fantastic watch. And then last but not least is the Parmigiani Fleurier Tonda 1950 in steel. I found one example for sub 5,000, uh, but they don't come around all the time. And typically they're sold pretty quickly. So if you do find one, uh, I would recommend in that sub $5,000 range, of course, I would definitely recommend you picking it up. It's a great watch, hand finish uh, movement. Of course, it uses their in-house kind of Voche caliber in-house, so to speak. But it's an amazing watch. Again, hand finished. It's really great movement. So we're talking high horology, really at a bargain. So those are just my recommendations. If you have any others, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of the video. If you have any recommendations for future videos, uh, please feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to make them. And with that, I'm going to sign off, say thank you so much. This is an invitation, of course, to like the video and to subscribe to, for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.